Hello and welcome to another scenery tutorial for FSX and P3D. Today we will be learning how to create train mesh from digital elevation models or DEMs. Okay, so where do we start? Well, let's start with obtaining our digital elevation model. USGS has both the TNM download server and the Earth Explorer server. If you're looking for data within the United States, you would you want to use the TNM download server. This only has data for the United States. If you're looking to get data for any other country, well, you're out of luck as far as that on the TNM download server. Now, if you are trying to get data for another country, well, you can go over to Earth Explorer. It does have digital elevation models. They are not going to be as high resolution as on the TNM server, but it still has fairly high quality data. So using the Earth Explorer server, let's download some digital elevation models for the Galapagos Islands. Let's just zoom in on them here. Now, the TNM server, you do not have to create an account to download the data. On the Earth Explorer server, you do have to create an account. So right up here at the top, click register and go ahead and fill out the information. Create an account on here and make sure you're logged in before you start to even try downloading any data. Okay, since I already have an account, I'm just going to log in here. Okay, now I'm logged in. Alright, left clicking, we're going to drag our view back down here using our center scroll wheel to zoom in. And over here on the left hand side, you have three different boxes. This middle box here, the second box, you're going to hit the use map button. That is going to draw a red box with four points on your screen. You're just going to move each of these points until you enclose the entire area that you want to download. Now you don't have to worry about getting this box perfect, especially if you're downloading islands. Um, if you're down downloading something on a continent, yeah, you got to get it a little bit more precise and as close to uh, the bounds that you want to download as possible. But as far as islands, we can really just get in the ballpark of them. Um, if we clip some water out here, that's not a problem because uh, NASA doesn't provide any data for the water out here. So, I mean, you're not going to be downloading any more than the land tiles or the tiles that have land in them. So don't worry about if you get an ocean in there. You don't need to make it perfect. Just make sure you get all of the islands or all of the area that you want to download covered with the red box. Okay, so we're going to select data sets, this tab right up here at the top. We are going to go down to digital elevation. You do have a couple of different uh, sources here. Um, Oster is, uh, I wouldn't use that. It's kind of, you can use that as a fallback if you really have no other data. But it usually has quite a bit of uh, abnormalities in it. Uh, data spikes or elevation spikes, uh, holes, pits, stuff of that nature. It's not, it, it's imperfect data is what it's usually referred to as. So we're not going to use that one. Let's go down here to the SRTM tab. That is, that stands for Shuttle Radar Topography Mission. Their previous data was 76 meters per pixel in resolution. This new version 3 data has been reprojected into 38 meters per pixel resolution, which is a major improvement over the past resolution. So we're going to select this SRTM 1 arc second global. This 1 arc second is going, is going to give us 38 meter per pixel train mesh in the sim. Now we don't need to add any additional criteria to it so we're just going to go right to the results page all right so you'll notice that we have a drop down here that displays any of our data that we have selected on our data sets page right now we only have that one srtm one hour set one arc second 
global selected so that's the only thing that's showing up on our drop down right now down below here we have a list of all of the tiles it's de uh, default it's set to uh, 10 items per page so if you click the little drop down tab here it'll show additional pages if you have any but we only have 10 tiles here as you can see right here so we don't have to deal with that um, if you do have I would say uh, over 20 or 30 tiles if you don't want to go through here and hit this download button and actually download each one of these tiles individually um, or maybe even if you just have you know not so great internet or download speed you can go through here and click this little uh, it looks like a folder almost and it just it adds it to bulk download so it adds it to your uh, your basket up here or your shopping cart and you can just go down and select all these real fast. Now, one thing I do dislike about the Earth Explorer server is there is no option to just select all and add to your basket. I think that's the most annoying thing ever. If you have, you know, a couple hundred tiles you're trying to download, you still gotta go through and, you know, click something on something on each of those individual tiles. Which can get quite annoying after a while. So if you're downloading a lot of data, it may take you a little while on the Earth Explorer server. But luckily for us, we're not downloading that much data. So I'm just going to go through here and download each one of these individually. I'm just going to download this file as a GeoTIFF. That's what I've always used. I've never used the BIL or DTED formats. I've always just used GeoTIFF. It's a larger file. Um, if you want to play around with it, you can try the BIL download. It's 363.6 uh, kilobytes, so it's a smaller file. I don't exactly know what that file does, if it's a data file, highly compressed, or what it is. Um, but for uh, the sake of this tutorial, let's just click the GeoTIFF download button. So hit download. There we go. It took a couple of seconds. Okay, so it's downloading. This box doesn't click off automatically, so you got to hit the X. And we're going to do that for the remaining 10 files here, or the 10 tiles. Okay, and now all those files are downloaded. So if we haven't already, before we do anything with those files, let's bring up our projects folder. Then inside you want to create an INF file or copy over an INF file. You also, I like to copy the resample.exe into that folder as well. You can just run it out of the, uh, the SDK folder, but I just like to copy it in there just for ease of access. So we have those two files in there now. Um, if you do not have an INF file, simply just go near your uh, text program. You can use just the regular text document here and you know save as uh, select all files then you know whatever dot inf and save and it'll create an inf file in here so you can do that if you don't have an inf file we will go over the inf file towards the end of this tutorial so you will know what to put in there by the end of this tutorial or at least a good bit of what to put in there so going back over to our data, let's just click one of these tabs, show in folder, verify that we have 10 files here, so let's highlight them. 10 items selected, so we got all of our files. We can down, or we can click out of that. I'm gonna move that uh, folder off screen so you guys won't be able to see that for a little while here. Let's just create a new folder here. Let's just uh, let's just title it data. That gives us a place that we can kind of throw our files here. So let's drag those files over into this folder. And close out of that download folder now. Don't need that anymore since our data is over here. Okay, so we have get rid of that text file. Don't need that. Now we should have an inf in this folder. Our resample.exe should be in here, and we should have another folder inside of this a subfolder called data, which contains all of 
our GeoTIFF images. So next we need a program such as Global Mapper. There is another program out there. I don't remember what that program's called. I will put it down in the description though as an alternative to Global Mapper. I've never used the program though, so I don't have any insight on how to use it. I've always used Global Mapper. So we're just going to show you how to put this data together using Global Mapper. So let's load up Global Mapper. Let's bring up our data, highlight our data, and just drop it on the home screen here. The GeoTIFF contains coordinates, so that's why we get this message. It's just it's wanting us to verify if it's a photo or if it's going to be elevation data. So it says yes for elevation data, no for raster data or raster image data, which is an aerial photo. We have elevation data, digital elevation model, so we are going to click yes. But since we drug over all 10 files, let's click yes to all so we don't have to click yes 10 times. So yes to all. Okay, so we got all of our data loaded in here. Now this data may have some issues with it. Look, just look in here, there's kind of these patchy areas. Um, if I scroll over this, I don't see data down the bottom corner here. You'll see right here at the bottom, it says zero meters out here. And if I kind of go over the land here, that number increases as the elevation goes up. But if I go right here, it doesn't even show an elevation. So I don't remember if there's going to be data for that or not. Um, I ran into this before. I ran into this. I mean, it, it's like this for every SRTM tile almost, or the majority of them. There's that data there and that's just stuff that kind of needs to be filled in now we can fill in some of that and I will show you how in just a second uh, it's really easy to do it's not a perfect fix by any means it's, um, but it'll it'll fill in some of the some of the smaller stuff and kind of make it not as buggy Okay, so if your data or if your datum is not already WGS84, you need to convert it to that format. So if it's not, which SRTM data should be, but other data sources will have different datums. So go up to your tools tab, hit configure. Right here, you'll see your datum. Just uh click the drop down here and scroll towards the bottom it's all in alphabetical order for the most part I believe yeah kinda and you're just gonna select WGS 84 and hit apply and make sure uh, also your projection is geographic latitude and longitude and that your units are in arc degrees so since our uh, datum for this Data here is already WGS84. We're just going to click OK. We don't need to do anything to apply it because it's already in that format. So we are good to go from this point. Um, it's a fairly small data area, so it should fit all in a single GeoTIFF. If you're uh, compiling, you know, uh, quite a few tiles or over a very, very large area you're not gonna fit all that into a geo tiff so you'll have to kinda split those up use your judgment on that um, and put them on their separate files then you'll have to um, create sources inside your INF file which I can I'll briefly go over that as well I'm gonna go to our export tab export elevation grid format GeoTIFF. Okay, very important. If we are using really any data 10 meters in resolution or less, so 10 meter through 76 meter, or whatever, we need to be using 16 bit integer samples here. Um, if we have data more high resolution, than 10 meter per pixel data 
which is 10 meter per pixel data is one third arc second. So if we're using uh, one ninth arc second, which is uh, typically two to three meters in resolution, we will need to select elevation 32 bit floating point samples. That 32 bit allows us to use the fraction bits. Um, it allows us to use fraction bits in our INF which allows for uh, smoothing the terracing or stair-stepping effect of high-resolution mesh in the simulator. So for our data we just need to select 16-bit integer samples so let's keep that selected. Vertical units should be in meters. Resampling default. Don't need to pay attention to any of this right here make sure always generate square pixels is checked don't worry about this export at fixed scale don't worry about any of this TIFF format options here uh, make sure this is 75 that should be what it is at default and do not compress it at all so don't really worry about any of those options unless they're different from what I have here if they're different from what I have here make sure you fill in the appropriate stuff now down here at the bottom, if we want to go back to this data and we don't want to reload it and all that, if we've made a bunch of changes to it, we can create a TFW or a, actually a project file, file, a PRJ file. And uh, then we can just jump right back into where we left off if we're editing. But uh, since this is not a lot of data, we don't really need to do that. So I'm going to uncheck the PRJ and TFW file. They're just not needed. What we do need to select down here is interpolate to fill small gaps in data and that will automatically fill in some of the smaller gaps in your data. So if you have some uh, data missing sometimes it will create these weird uh, spikes in the sim and if you click that some of those uh, smaller spikes are going to go away. So that just kind of helps you clean it up a bit. So with the rest of these checkboxes down here, just leave them blank. We don't need to check any of that. Tiling tab, don't have to worry about the tiling tab. Um, <clears throat> export bounds tab, it's going to by default it's going to be set to all loaded data. Keep that setting if you're just going to export all the data you see here. Now, if you want to export just like a single island out of a tile, so let's pretend this square right here is a single tile. It's not. It's like four tiles. But let's just say it's a single tile for the sake of this tutorial. Say we wanted to just export this island right here. Well, what we could do is we could go up here. Let's cancel all that real quick. We can go up here to our digitalizer tool, click that, kind of zoom into our island here, right click, you're going to hover over create area slash polygon features. Down here at the bottom you can select what type of shape you want to draw. Uh, normally I just do a rectangular square area. But you're just going to draw a square around it try to get the data that you want in there um, then you can go to go back into your export here and go down to crop to selected area features make sure before you do that though uh, click on your box and it'll bring up some like diagonal lines and kinda tells you that that box is selected then once that box is selected you can hit crop to selected area features and it will just export what's inside that box. So if you're just exporting a small area out of a tile you can use that option and you don't have to export all of this data here because that'll take up extra you know that'll make your file bigger and you really don't need that if you're just exporting a small island. So that's a little tip to uh, get the download size or get the file size down of your mesh as well if you're just exporting a small area no need to export a big old tile and all the you know and all the data inside of it if you only need a small portion okay so let's export this now go back through the menu here 
everything here is good to go. Uh, all data or all loaded data in the export bounds. So let's click OK. Navigate to our folder. And this is where we are going to be saving this image out to. So let's just call this, I'm just going to say, let's just put a G for Galapagos. And underscore 38M for 38 meters. And click Save. Okay, our data has been exported to a GeoTIFF file, so we can hit the uh, downscale or downscale on that and close it down to our taskbar. Back up here, we have our GeoTIFF file in here. It is 395 megabytes for that entire area. Um, now, if we really if we really wanted to optimize this and get as small of a file size as we can. Especially for islands, all of this blue here is still being counted as data. So we can take the trick with the digitalizer tool that I just told you a minute ago and go around to each island and cut in as close to the island as we can to exclude as much of this blue as possible. Then we would select each one of those areas individually and export those bounds as separate images and that uh, that's going to exclude a lot of this data out here that you just don't need okay so let's open up our inf file now we only have one source in here because we only have one image or one geotiff image now if we have multiple images we'll have to add multiple sources in here and i'll kind of pop up Instead of typing it all in, I'll pop up um, an INF to some photo scenery I did that uses multiple sources. And it's set up pretty much exactly the same. Just all the other parameters down here are going to be different. Of course, because it's you know mesh instead of photo reel. But you'll have up the top a single source. Type equals multi-source. Then you'll list the number of sources. So if you have eight different sources down here at the bottom our last one ends in eight so that number here at the top is going to be eight so then down below this single source you're going to add additional sources just make sure you add the appropriate number following that source and that's how you would add multiple sources to this INF file now we need to change the name of our TIFF file inside of our INF here to match the one we just made. You have your minimum elevation value right here. So since these are islands, our minimum elevation is going to be zero for at sea level. Anything below zero is gonna be excluded. Now make sure you have null cell value in here. That number should be set at negative 32,767. And what that'll do is, uh, if you don't have that in there, sometimes it'll, though there will be like deep craters out in the water, um, just from you know jacked up data. So if you put that number in there, it's gonna remove that data, and it's just gonna look past it. So you won't have like big old craters out in the water or on your land or anything. Now this next thing, pixel is point. Now we can refer to the MSDN documentation here for the SDK to find out what pixel is point is. Now they have a really cool graphic here. If you have pixel is point equals zero, your northwesternmost corner of your GeoTIFF image is going to be used as a reference for placing it in the sim for your coordinates. If pixel is point equals one, the center of your GeoTIFF image is where it'll pull or is where it'll say the coordinates are going to be located so to figure out which pixel is point setting we need to use we need to review the metadata inside of global mapper so that's why i said don't close out of this yet just downsize it to your taskbar because we got to go back in here 
So we're going to go up to Tools, Control Center. We can just click on one of these images because we don't need to click on each individual one. I mean, it's all going to be the same pixels, point, information, and the metadata. So click Metadata down here at the bottom. And we're going to scroll down to the very bottom of this. And you'll see here Bit Depth equals 16. That's why we kept our Bit Depth the same. And Minimum min elevation so your minimum elevation is negative 24 meters so below sea level and uh it's an island so there's not going to be anything below sea level so that's why we set that minimum elevation of zero in the inf now your maximum elevation is 646 meters so if you're using uh high resolution data such as three meter mesh that's uh you're going to need that number so that's where you can find that number because you'll have to define your minimum elevation and your your highest point as well uh, to use fraction bits because the more accurate the fraction bits is the less elevation it sees so you want to make sure that you have your minimum elevation and your maximum elevation defined but that won't be covered in this tutorial all right, so down here at the bottom, right here, raster type, pixel is point. That is the information we came to look for. So pixel is point. So since that's true, we would use the one. So pixel is point equals one. For our destination section here, um, if your destination directory is going to be the same as where your data is just put a period there that's what I always do I always compile everything in the same folder destination base file name that is going to be the file or the name of your file so type in whatever you want that to be called let's just say Galapagos and it's 38 meter mesh so 38 M All right, destination file type should equal BGL because it is going to be a BGL file, just like photo roll would be. Compression quality, this this is optional. Um, you can choose to use just a light amount of compression if you'd like to. Um, of course, removing this completely, it defaults to com a compression quality of 100. Uh, so if you want your mesh to be, you know, as detailed as possible, just completely take that out or just set it to equals 100. I'd just completely take it out. Um, if you want to compress it down a little bit to get a smaller file size, I just have mine set at compression quality equals 97. That gives you a little bit off the edge. So if you're, you know, providing these files to somebody to download, they don't have to download as much data. So as far as the level of detail, level of detail for me equals auto. Um, if you want to get more specific, you can define specific level of details for this. But I tend to just keep mine at auto as usually it does a pretty good job for what I use it for. I don't get real complex with my mesh or anything. So I don't have to ever define a certain level of detail. Um, but if you run into any issues something's not loading quite right or something's not displaying quite right you may have to go through there and actually define level of details but for the sake of this tutorial we're just going to leave it set to auto because like I said usually it does a pretty good job since we have everything filled in that needs to be filled in we can click save on this file take this INF file and drag it and drop it over your resample.exe um, It's weird. Tiff read directory warning, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's weird. I have never seen that error before, but let's see what happens. Sometimes it'll throw up errors in here. It's just something it doesn't like about the image. Um, some of it, though, it won't affect your outcome at all it's just kind of a general warning or some of them will completely screw it all up and 
all that fun stuff. <laughs> let's uh, let's see what the verdict is here. I'm gonna open up my SDK. So let's go to let's just use the FSX SDK. Gonna go into the environment kit, train SDK, and TMF viewer. It's gonna bring up this white screen here. And bring up your window and drag and drop your BGL onto this. Um, at first, sometimes it may not display everything, so go up here to your view tab and select your level detail. Here we will see that our level detail has a max of 10. So if we load that, that's loading that max level detail. Um, or we can go up here to either auto standard or auto progressive, which progressive loads it progressively. Or just auto standard, which kind of cleans up the edges there. But that'll, as you zoom in, that'll select your set your level detail to whatever it needs to be when you zoom in. Okay, so as long as we don't see any purple tiles on this, if you see a tile or an area of your tiles that is purple, that is going to be um, an issue in your scenery. Which usually, if we have that uh, null value set, you're not going to see any of those unless you're using the uh, fraction bits to fix terracing and you cut off a part of a mountain. Then you'll uh, you'll see that purple where you've cut off data. But since we're not using fraction bits, that's not even an issue with this data. Um, what I'm more concerned about is this white area right here. Is there even any data in there? It's kind of Looking down here at the val bottom, you can see value equals zero. That's what your elevation is going to read. So if I kind of just move my way over here, that's going to start increasing going up the mountain. But if I get over here, does it go? What's it do? It kind of just stays at it. It's... So one seven seven nine. It seems like that data there is going to be completely flat. That value is 2588. So it looks like there's going to be some plateaus right there. That's what that's going to turn out to be. So that's uh, that's some issues with the data there. But that's just, uh, for this data, that's kind of unavoidable. Until they come out with a uh, SRTM V3 with uh, all this stuff filled in. But other than that, it looks good. So we can take this BGL now and drop it into our sim. Uh, I'm assuming you're already familiar with how to load it into your sim. Um, I'm sure you've added scenery before. Same uh, same thing. Just drop it into your scenery folder. Uh, create a subfolder inside your add-on scenery, wherever. Then uh, link to it using the uh, the scenery library within the simulator. And your train mesh should load in, and you should see, as long as you have it activated, you should see your final product. Thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something new off this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below for me. I'll try to answer you back as fast as I can. If you'd like to see me do a tutorial covering anything else scenery design related, drop me a comment below also. If I know how to do it, I will make a tutorial for it. Anyways, that is all I have for you guys right now. So, until next time, Rotonut44 out.